I'm gonna start using 3.5 grams of silver to make this tubing. So what you wanna do is mill the material into sheet two and a half times the thickness of the tubing needed. And then we're gonna add the thickness of the material to the equation. Okay, so if you decide to finish your tubing at two millimeters, what you're gonna do is multiply that width by 2.5, uh, which is gonna give you five millimeters, and then you're gonna add the thickness. In this case, 0.2 millimeters is the thickness required. Um, we're gonna add that to the five millimeters, which is gonna give us a width of 5.2 millimeters needed to complete up the tubing at two millimeters. Say I'm at three and a half millimeters wide, um, approximately one millimeter inch, one millimeter, sorry, thick. So we definitely have to continue milling. I would recommend that you have someone on the receiving end of the mill to assist you in holding the metal firm enough so it doesn't bend while milling. I want you all to remember to heat the material periodically so you don't end up with splits and cracks on the edges of the shape. So I've just about reached the thickness and width that I need. I'm at 5 millimeters. Didn't make it to the 5.2 but I'm going to stop here because I've reached the desired thickness that I need. As you can see the material is very flexible. This is going to make it very easy when forming the tubing. Okay, so moving forward, what we're going to do is we're going to start forging a concave shape along, along the length of the sheet, right? And we're going to do that using this bending block, right? So let me show you guys. So as you can see, there are many grooves in this block. And what we're trying to do is find a groove as close as possible to the width of the material that we have. And then we're going to, as we hammer lightly, we're going to hammer lightly using the tool that matches it and move downward toward the smaller grooves. Okay? So check it. Now keep in mind it is required to anneal the material before creating this concave shape on the sheet. So please bear in mind when you're hammering, you try to keep the hammer on the side closest to the edge of the block and not, not to the edge of the bending tool. Because what is going to happen if we tap this end here is going to create an, an impression on the other side and we don't want to create an impression from the edge here so keep hammering to the back we're not going to go much more concave onto another groove I think this is just enough for the entire strip all right so as you can see we got that shape we we're looking for Got a notch on a couple of areas coming down. That's because the edge of the bending tool made that impression there. But I'm going to get that out when pulling it through the draw plate, which is the next step. All right. have a bending block I want to show you a technique that you can use to create that concave effect on the sheet so it's very simple and a very ingenious way of improvising 
Um, what you can, can do is get a solid piece of wood. This is just a, a block that I have hanging around. And using my, um, uh, let me just get the scope in a little bit for you. Okay, yeah. Using that, uh, my fordham and a, a wrong bird to the end, I'm gonna create a groove on the inside of the wood, the strip of wood, sorry. And then I'm gonna lay the material there. And using the same technique, I'm gonna tap my way in. You can try your best and make it as smooth and as even as possible. For extra definition, I'm just going to use this steel rod and hammer shape into the uh, block of wood. See? Just make sure it's deep and wide enough to hold the width of the sheet deep enough to create that concave finish that you're looking for. These are two steel gauge rods that I use for chain making. Using, I use these to make a Spanish link. Um, and I'm going to use that to create the shape almost the same way we did with the bending block. Just the same as the bending block. I'm going to change to the smaller rod to create a more concave shape. But please remember to heat the material periodically in between each change of a rod or size as you go smaller. That's how you create your concave without the use of the bending block. Okay, so using the draw pick, we're gonna continue the process and complete the shape of the tube. Um, the objective is almost the same as drawing wire. What we're gonna do is start on the larger end and continue to the smaller holes. And this is going to fold the sheet inwardly until both ends meet and we get a complete tube, all right? Before moving forward, we want to fold at least three quarter of an inch of the uh, tubing completely into a cylindrical form and then solder a piece of wire on the inside of it. And this is going to create a point, a point, uh, pointed shape so that it fits in the initial hole of the draw plate. I'm going to demonstrate that. Of course, if you don't have the bending block, you can carefully improvise using a pair of wrong nose pliers to complement the piece of wire. Using a pair of flat, I'm just going to put it in some more.
So what you want to do is compress the sheet inwardly towards the wire as, as close as possible so you can get that cylindrical shape to fit between the holes of the draw plate. Just a light tap, pulling the sheet inwardly and both sides. What you can also do is tap lightly along the entire strip to, to pull it in slightly a little bit more so it's easier to fit through the holes of the draw plate. That's the main objective at this stage. As you can see, that's what we're looking to get. Make sure and anneal the material properly before moving towards the draw plate because you're gonna put the uh, sheet through a lot of stress while folding. So you definitely need to anneal properly before heading to the draw plate. You want to make sure you lubricate the surface area of the, of the tubing. Um, this makes it easier for it to slide through the holes of the drop it. You can either use beeswax. I don't have beeswax right now, so I'm just using my um, cut lube. Using a foam grip, we're going to draw the ends of the wire through slowly. Might be a little stiff at first. And we're gonna go to one more before annealing. look closely you can see that we are almost there the lines are almost touching almost completely enclosed we probably just have to pull through one more hole in the drop it to get it completely enclosed Okay, so there we have it guys, our perfectly enclosed hollow tubing that can be used for hinges, uh, hoops, and you can go as far as using them to make your own tube settings.
guys enjoyed the video i hope it was informative for you click the like button hit the subscribe button tune in to the next video where we turn this tube in into a pair of hoops <laughs>